Thank you so much, first of all, for the invitation, Nicola and EMCC. I am looking around the screen, nearly 100 people, and hello, 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 because there's lots of faces I know out there. So welcome, everyone. So the way we're going to do this, I'll share really high level about our supervision model, and then we're moving into a demo. Um, Deborah Jones has very kindly brought a case from her practice, and myself and Ina and Samira are in group supervision together um, with myself leading. And we'll see where we end up. And then after that, we'll debrief and then Q&A. How does that sound? Beginning of next week, I'm also sharing this in a lot more detail. We've got it on our website in detail. However, I said to Nicola, it's about time I actually um, updated it because this, you know, things evolve over time and get improved. And so I'll be sending you an updated version um, as a little booklet should you want to play about with the model. So this model is in over 30 different languages and we're still looking for a number of languages. If anyone can help, please do the links there so you can see which ones we haven't got, but also we're desperate for Klingon. So if you're a Klingon expert, <laughs> help us out just in case the people in outer space want to use it as well. So this is the model that we use and results are in the center. So solution focused, however, when we say solution focus, that bit is number one, contracting the way we want to work together. And also it's about integration. So what have we all learned together from this supervision that we can then apply in our practice? Okay. We blend in skills, knowledge, and behaviors or attitudes. It is a systemic model. I actually trained with um, Ina Samira and Deborah in different programs and with a systemic focus. And then also you'll see at the bottom field awareness. So that is if you want to um, use it in different ways. For example, the field that the coaching is taking place in be it the financial sector, the health service, hospitality, etc, government, private, and even if it is um, you know um, SME, etc. So all those types of things. And then we've got reflection. So the things we have here are reflection on the past. We all know that one. Reflecting in the moment, which you'll see happening today. And now is a different moment, so things may have shifted right now. And then pre-flexion linked to integration, which is even fast forwards, practicing the way we want to be, how we want to do things in future. And actually role play and other things can be blended in there. Then transition planning, coping with setbacks and dependencies. Just one example, the team keep pushing back that type of thing. And, you know, it's something that comes up quite often in supervision. So where are we now? Where do we need to be? What impact do we want to create? And then also action. So what actions have been taken? What can we act on right now? Shifts in perspectives, unpacking beliefs and values, et cetera, um, and future action as well. And then at the top, belief. When we're grounded and we believe in the work we do, it is more likely to create the impact that's needed for our world. Momentum, keeping things moving forward. So that's in the session, but also in the supervision project supervising someone over time and of course that momentum out there for applying it in practice and then celebration so the celebration of vulnerability and bravery 
in a supervision session. And of course, this is for supervisors as well. So when we have supervision on supervision, celebrating that we're using that in our supervision practice, and then also celebrating when the client's client has achieved over time and bringing it back to supervision. Hey, I tried that and this happened and whoo, high five. So champion, championing is in there as well. We looked at a number of different supervision models. There are different types of supervision models. The way I'd um, name this the origin of this one is really grounded theory. So what's been happening in supervision and then looking at what's needed in the model and backwards and forwards and what other models had and so forth. So you'll get more of a write up on that. Is there any burning quick question before we move on into the demonstration? So Nicola's going to put myself and Inna and Samira on spotlight. The rest of you to stay on camera, regardless of the fact that we are in the fish tank. I prefer fish tank because you can fit more in it than a fish bowl. And I invite Deborah first, then Ina and Samira to just say a few words about themselves so you can get to know them a bit, Deborah. Hello, everybody, and thank you, Claire, for inviting me and EMCC Global for uh, putting on the session. So I'm Deborah Jones, and I live in Leicester in the Midlands in the UK, and I work pretty much all over the UK. My practice is probably threefold. Um, I am one of those people who uh, I practice as a coach. So I'm PCC with the ICF. I also practice as a systemic team coach, which is where Claire and I and Inna met. Um, but I also do some leadership development work as well. So every now and again, I put on the consultant hat and uh, I do a lot of work in the public sector in the UK. So working in particular with the NHS, with the police and with community leaders as well. I've got two little boys and um, yeah, I, I love my work. I won't say anything more. I think that that'll do from me today. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. Ina. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Claire, for having me here. Thank you, AMCC. It's a great honor to be here and to, to assist you with, with the supervision we're going to have today with Debs. Um, I am executive coach, uh, professional certified coach, uh, according to ICF standards. I'm also holding a, an advanced certification in team coaching from uh, International Coach Federation. Uh, I am an educator. I'm running a training coaching program um, dedicated to systemic coaching in organizations. I mostly work with uh, individuals in teams in IT sector, in high tech, and uh, I would be happy to help Claire with that inquiry here. Thank you. Thank you. And Samira. Hello, everyone. Thank you, MCC, for giving us this opportunity to, to, to be part of this journey. Thank you, Claire, for invite invitation. So my name is Samira Baba. I'm from Bahrain. I'm an MCC from ICF, also a senior practitioner and a, a supervisor from EMCC, accredited by EMCC. I'm a coach trainer, a coach by practice. Uh, and for fun, I love creating coaching tools. So that's what I do on site. Thanks again. Thank you. And I'll just say a few words about myself briefly as well. Um, I used to be nervous about sort of sharing this type of thing. And then Peter Hawkins shared a model. Nick Smith created it as well with him. We know it. I'm looking at our little group here, but many of you might know it. API, authority, presence, and impact. And actually, all the work we do, it's important to share about yourself, one, because of psychological safety and it builds up trust, but also so people buy in and they realise what they are getting in terms of qualifications 
an experience. So I am EMCCM accredited supervisor, master practitioner in team coaching, mentoring and coaching, um, ICF, AC, TC and MCC, certified agile coach, and that's enough. So, Deborah. Okay, Claire, how long have I got? So we've got around, how long do you need? A couple of, a couple of minutes, a couple of days? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with the couple of minutes version. Um, okay, just one sec, Deborah. Before we dive in, we've got until the hour together. And I know that you may have to dip off afterwards. Let us know at the end and I'll remind you if it's OK for us to then debrief, even though you're not with us. We'll go back there. And in terms of us all contracting, so I've worked with all of you before and you all know each other. Is there anything we need today for this session together? Uh, just your standard ethics, really. I'm I'm not going to share names, and I won't share um, the name of the organisation. But you will know the larger organisation, and I I just need to to ask everybody not to share the story um, elsewhere. Thanks. Keep Thank it you. private. Ina Samira, anything else that you need? I'm fine with that, just probably depth. Do you need anything special from myself and Samira? Um, no, no, just uh, say it like it is, be blunt, tell me if you think I'm missing a trick. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to your uh, expert supervision. <laughs> Fantastic. So this is group supervision. I'm leading the supervision with a small L. And Ina and Samira are in the uh, fish tank with us. And it's Deborah who's bringing the case. So give us the book title, the film title, the headlines, Deborah. And what we're going to do after a little while, we'll do a barioche retoot. We'll take time out of time and myself, Ina and Samira are going to share what we have been experiencing about, you know, when you've been speaking. So okay. we're not going to ask questions or give advice, etc. We're going to share initially in the first round what we've been experiencing. Okay. So um, I'll get stuck in then, if that's all right. And please, if I mix my metaphors, I'll try not to, because I understand we're an international audience, but please forgive me if I end up mixing metaphors or you know, trying to bring the, the case alive using things that maybe are a bit off uh, and not quite as pinpoint accurate as you might hope for. So uh, the book title, wow, I just what comes to mind. Teens stuck in a system. And it's probably not the best book title, but it's the, you know, it's sort of descriptive at this at this moment in time. I am the actual system or the actual field is the health system. So we're going, we're starting with a biggie and we're going to go with the NHS. Um, and the NHS, for those of you out there who don't know what it is, it's the National Health Service in the UK and it's a public body and it's been around since 1948 and um, is creaking, uh, has had huge amounts more demand placed on it and uh, lots of budget cuts. And um, over the last 10 to 15 years in particular, since the financial crash in 2008, 2009. So, and clearly we've had COVID as well. I am working with a particular trust, which is over one region of the UK. And in that trust, I'm working within a division of which there are many. And in that division, 
I'm working with right now this case two teams of consultants and they're they are obstetrics and gynecology consultants you may already know but just for clarity the way the structure works in the nhs is you have um management who manage budgets and day-to-day um, -day -day activities, planning, scheduling, resources, finances, etc. And then you have a line of clinical management as well. So actual clinicians, different branches, whether you're looking at radiographers, um, consultants, nurses, midwives, etc. I know there's lots more professions. Um, but you've got clinical line management and you've got management line management. So I was commissioned along with a, an associate coach to coach two teams in this division and they are obstetrics and gynecology teams. I was commissioned by the managing director who is the manager over the division. And alongside him, I get to work with the clinical director as well, who is on that clinical side. And the, the people who we're coaching are in clinical teams, actually. They're not in the management team, but of course they have to interact with each other. It's a matrix. And um, they a lot of the parameters and boundaries around their work are set not just by the clinical director in terms of practice and um the BMA, the BMA, the British Medical Association, they're also set by the managers who have an influence over rates of pay, have an influence over the number of uh, clinics an individual has to do or certainly is asked to do. They have an influence over the number of sur uh, surgeries and procedures, for example. I'll I'll leave it there, that there's operational influence over their work by both heads. Um, so we have been coaching two teams who work at two separate hospitals and um, their coaching was set up one of the teams off the back of a formal review by NHS England. Um, and I, again, I don't know how many, how much you know, but there's some, as, as I would imagine in lots of countries, there's a spotlight sometimes on particular services. Um, NHS England will come in and, and say, right, we're, we're going to have a look at obstetrics and, and maternity services, for example, because maybe they've been um, some some deaths or some scandals or just, you know, they're coming in to look from a quality perspective. So one of the teams coaching was set up after a review, but it was a year after that review actually happened and gave some recommendations that the team have some support. And the other team didn't have a review, but they're part of the same trust. And it was the sort of managing director and the clinical director's view that this particular team would also benefit. So we contracted with both teams. As you can imagine, it wasn't the team themselves that said we would like to have some team coaching, although they were both happy to have the support. The one team was keener on it, the one team that had had the review, um, for obvious reasons maybe, than the other team. So we've made a lot of progress on different topics with both teams. And um, if I call one team A, and I need to remember in my mind's eye who I'm talking about, and the other one is team B. So team A is the team that had the review, the official report that said this team could do with some support. And I'm really paraphrasing. I'm not going into the details about why and, and, uh, and, and what about. Except to say that the probably the headline thing that they needed to work on 
was professional differences. I can, again, I'm sure you can imagine if you're a, a consultant or a team of consultants and um, you're working in maternity services, whether you have a difference of opinion on how early to induce a baby, for example, or when to do a C-section and when to leave things and let nature take its course, those are kind of important parameters and decisions that consultants need to make that have an influence on the patient, two patients, the mother and the baby, and the nursing, the midwifery staff, everybody around who is supporting, you know, that 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 baby to come into the world and that mother to give birth. So the professional differences of opinion were coming out and they were causing some angst is one way of putting it uh, also some confusion in and amongst the multidisciplinary teams around um, so they needed to tackle these and these were conversations that were in the unsaid these were conversations that had been bubbling up gossip at different times but nobody was having with one another because they really came from the heart. Okay, time out of time. <laughs> so we invite you to just listen, Deborah, and then we'll come back to you shortly. So, Samira, what have you been experiencing somatically as Deborah's been sharing? So I made a small drawing here. I wonder if you can see it or not. Let me just bring it back. A bit blurry. Yeah. That's better. Thanks. Uh -huh. And for some reason, I drew Deborah bigger than the co coach. I don't know why. I don't know. It just came that, that, that way. All right. Let me just re blur that. Um, my senses were, I acknowledge the fact how. Deborah is aware of the whole system, not only the teams, it's the way the teams are invited for this journey and how the bigger system is impacting. And Samira, what are you experiencing in your body? Because you're quite here. Small. Inside a big system, I felt my flat is so big now, and I'm just shrinking here. That's how I feel. Thank you. In a... Thank you for sharing first. As you were talking, um, I sort of ex have been experiencing kind of uh, stuckness. Like I got a little bit overwhelmed by the magnitude of what's going on with those team and within that system. And then I felt like I got stuck in a sort of a, say, metaphorically spider web of all those connections. And I had this huge tension in my neck trying to make sense of uh, all the details and of, of everything that's happening within the system with you with the with your co coach uh, with your teams and i was craving for something um i've noticed you you mentioned the word clarity uh, a few times and that was craving for clarity as well and i just couldn't find any entrance point to that clarity in that story as so i I've over overwhelmed stuck and in the center of the spider web that's my sensation And for me, they were, I feel right in this moment, a lot calmer 
when you were speaking, it was like um, loads of flashing lights, like a fairground and noise and being pulled in many different directions. There was also, there was a little feeling and I feel like it might have been um, as if it's being projected from the team of somehow of arrogance. I don't know if there's resonance there. And then the other thing, my legs are stuck. It's almost like my feet have got, you know, pins and needles when you want to move, but oh, it's going to hurt that little bit. And they just feel really heavy. So take a moment to absorb all that. And where are you now? Um, I'm feeling, but it is my tendency to go to the guilt, slightly guilty of actually trying to describe this to everybody, our wonderful audience here today, because it's not clear and it's hugely complex. And so I'm feeling a little bit guilty that maybe I've brought a case that is um, too complicated for a demonstration. And yet we're in it, so we're going to go with it anyway. Um, I am amazed at the images that you've all conjured up um, as a result of what I talked about, and I haven't even got to the punchline yet. Um, I and yet the apps, you're absolutely right. So being overwhelmed, being stuck in a spider web being really small in a huge system, being blinded by the flashing lights that, I mean, are just some of the things that you all mentioned is absolutely right. Um, absolutely right. And I've just mentioned a little bit of the, of, the, of, of the case as well. You know, there's so much more um, involved. Thank you. Can I can yeah. I interject one second? So any guilt you've got, ditch that completely. Teams are complex. Everyone's not in there. Yeah, <laughs> teams are complex. And have a think about what your question is. What needs answering in this session? Well, I have got a question, but it's on the back of a little bit more detail, if that's all right with you. So one of the requests from the team, and I'll just talk about the one team, but it applies to both, is that the leaders, so to speak, the managing director and the clinical director, spend more time with them talking and getting clearer on some of that operational stuff. So numbers of sessions, when we do ward rounds, what kind of compensatory leave we get, um, as well as some strategic planning for the future for the two locations and because as well of the complexity that's going on in the wider system not least doctor strikes that are happening right now in the UK as well and lots of relationship things that have come up in the past I've not been able to successfully get the clinical director and the managing director, the managing director's warming to it, but the clinical director to agree because of her complexity and potentially because of reluctance of other things. And I had a classic 
response. I say classic, that's me putting a judgment on it. So we can get rid of that. But I had a response and as well as the team have had the same response when they've independently asked. Well, that's why we brought in the team coaches. You need to sort them out. <laughs> so tried so many times now. Well, I'll say so many, probably a lot, about four, five different meetings to get the dates in the diary, to ask in different ways how I can support them so they feel more comfortable coming and supporting and involved and being with the team because it, the team is asking again and again and again and I think it's needed too and so far I've been unsuccessful and so that is my question to my supervision team how can I think differently or do you have any ideas as to how I can better facilitate, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here, the team and the team leadership come together. So this time when we go round, we'll share one thing that we've been curious about and we'll give one question. And then when we've done that, it's back to you, Deborah. So one thing I'm curious about is your energy shifted. You appear more grounded. I'm also curious about what Samira shared in terms of you and the co-coach. And you said, what can I in your question? And then my question to you is, where's the shared leadership in the team? Enough. Um, Deborah, I was sensing. I, I uh, building on what Claire just said. I also send, sense this change in energy, and um, there was some feeling behind that. I'm wondering if the feeling you might be having when you, you were talking about uh, uh, those leaders and you being unsuccessful to uh, let them understand their role in the process. I'm wondering, uh, might it be somehow connected? And if so, how? with a sense of guilt you were feeling previously, you were sharing with us. And my question um, to you would be, is the story about yourself or about them? Zina. Samira. Right, so this is what came up for me. Yep. So I was just listening at the scenario and at step there with a co-coach, talking to them, to talk to them, because both of them need, and they say it's your job. So that that reminded me of something. Sorry. So Deb was talking at the very beginning when we asked for contracting, she said, just the normal ethics. And suddenly it came to me that 
Deb is aware of her role as a coach. She knows she's there not to solve that for them. She cannot do it alone as part of being ethical coach, buy in from the leaders. So my question is, What is the learning around the scoping and stakeholder relationship involvement mapping that need to be considered in such situations moving forward? Could you repeat that, Samira? So what is the learning around the stakeholder mapping? Or was there another word you said before? Scoping. Cope. Oh, scoping. scoping. Yeah, scoping. So when in the yeah. very beginning, clarifying expectations and scoping, then the mapping who's involved, who's responsible, who's accountable, who's doing what in the very beginning. What would be the learning out of this moving forward? That's my question. Thank you. Thanks. There's one more thing for me, just I have to blurt. I'm wondering, are they ready for what you feel needs to be done with them when so much other stuff is going on? Okay. So would you like me to respond to each of the three, four questions? And or go to from that where you feel we all need to go next in service of the team. Okay. Well, in service of the team, that makes me all of a sudden feel much more connected to my heart and my empathy for the, them as individuals, as human beings. And, and I include both the team and the leaders in this as well. And the two questions that I will answer or I've got ideas about moving forward with some actions are actually your your questions, Claire, just out of um, coincidence, really, ladies. Um, where is the shared leadership in the team? So the actual team. They are actually distributing leadership and they have had some very difficult conversations in and amongst themselves about their internal team challenges. So those professional differences. And as a result, the shared leadership in their team is 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 really quite alive and healthy. It's in a healthy position. And I would encourage them in terms of my actions moving forward to build on the commitments that they made to one another and their patients and their, um, their, their co-workers, their peers, regardless of whether or not they get the, meet, the, the meeting with the, the senior directors that they wanted. If I think about your second question, Claire, which was your last question, are they ready for what needs to be done? Neither the managing director nor the clinical director are ready for what needs to be done. And that's not because they're not capable individuals or because they don't care. They do both. But they are so overwhelmed with everything else. And they are 
in some respects worn down by individual you know one-to-one -one requests and differences of opinion and and difficulties that you can have um that they are not ready no and to samira's question about scoping and stakeholder mapping we did contract that that the managing director and the clinical director would also be part of the coaching and be required and i suspect that they didn't really we contracted in a meeting in a in a microsoft teams meeting like a zoom meeting that we're on now and it was quite a while ago and i think my lessons have been because i've had such pushback when i've tried to get them in, in, invited them or the the team have invited them um i've not my my learning is i've not taken them back to that contracting and said you agreed that you would be part of this journey and um you know we do you remember because it's quite they're quite angry they're quite they're in quite a bit of pain i think about and and that's fueling their reluctance And What's going on for you now? Um, well, somatically, uh, my 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 sort of here, you know, I don't know whether that's my solar plexus. It's sort of in between my heart and my stomach chakra. If we're going to go to use those reference points, I guess solar plexus is it is it's a bit churning, a bit tight. Um, And I, I'm quite a pragmatic person. I'm quite a practical person. I, I've, I've got them to agree in principle. Well, I've got the managing director. I've got one of them to agree that we will have these meetings. We haven't got the dates yet, and um, the clinical director is away, and I suspect she will be more reluctant but I want to I, I think I'm feeling I can only I can only do what I can do to support them all I can't solve this for them I can't fix it for them but I think my job is to continue to be authentic and continue to Be honest with them about what is and what isn't achievable in their relationships with the team, depending on their level of involvement, if, if you know what I mean. Can't solve, you can't fix, and my shoulders are feeling really tight and heavy right now. <sighs> Deborah. Should we go somewhere entirely different? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. So I know you've um, worked with metaphors and images before. So I invite you to consider from these images where the team are at and you're either in the team or out of the team, where do you all need to move together?
Well, from those images, I'm going to say where they're at now is, and, and this is not just the team, this is in total with the, in the division with the with the leaders as well. I'm gonna, I, the tortoise um, jumps out for me. And and where the only thing that really is is clear for me as what as to where I want them to be is the is the balcony picture with the sea because it's you know that's that's sort of representing the some peace and some clarity for me. Don't know how long it's going to take that tortoise to get on that balcony. And if there was more time, we'd go deep into each of these. So we invite Ina and Samira to ask around this. They're here. They need to be here. What needs to be said, Samira? I mean, eventually the tortoise will go towards the sea, where else it will go? That's the nature. What would be my level, or depth level of uh, patience to hold that container for the tortoise to move safely towards? C. So that's my question. Lina? Well, that's really interesting. I, I was looking at the, the torture before Deborah chose it. But and my question would be, um, what kind of vehicle could you choose for the torturers to move faster? <laughs> and may I ask you another question, Deborah? Mm -hmm. um, what's behind the horizon for your team, for both teams? and for both team leaders. And I notice, I notice there's no ships on the sea. And I'm thinking about that phrase, a ship safe in the dock. What ways can you and your co-coach co challenge and support the team for them to be able to cope on that big sea? Okay. Well, take, think, yeah, take us where we need to go. Sorry, Deborah. No, that's okay. Um, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed all of a sudden, you know, as the as the supervisee, like, oh my god, I've got to answer it all now. Um so Samira, you asked me what level of patience I need to help the tortoise work walk towards the sea. Huge levels of patience, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> lots. So probably years worth of patience, I think, um, or if not years, certainly 
another six months minimum, if not another year. Um, and that's quite useful for me as a coach to to get perspective around, you know, the length of time for this piece of work for their for their journey. Often we get commissioned as coaches to do team coaching over the course of six months or three months or a, a year and it's you know six weeks apart or um two, two months apart and and actually what I hadn't considered and is going to be really useful in my work with this team but also in future projects is the time frame you know we tend to set time frames around deliverables and interactions with the team and and le I thought less so about setting that that time frame for impact out further and that's really really going to be useful thank you um in a, I no idea. I don't, I mean, what kind of vehicle to, to choose for the tortoise to go faster? Um, if anybody else out there has got any thoughts about that kind of bit, that vehicle, both metaphorically or real, um, I, I'd, I'd really, really welcome that. Um, actually I do have a thought and it's just come to mind and it's a rubber dinghy because it it floats softly it's not fast but it's faster than a tortoise's legs and what's behind the horizon I'm I'm not I I don't think there's any any utopia behind that horizon. I don't think, you know, this is health. This is and this is this is maternity and, and obstetrics. You know, this is complex, this is messy, this is continually that way. There will always be crises just because of the nature of the, the work. Um but what I that balcony represents for me and my hopes and aspirations on behalf of the team is that is somewhere to go to together that is calm and peaceful. So these little moments where the team and the team leaders can actually have some useful strategic conversations, have some pleasant interactions that are hopeful and bring clarity that's it's not quite answering but it that's my my hope for it um and your question claire about what ways can i and my co-coach support the team to be able for them to cope when you asked me that question initially i just thought about sustainable practices really which is what we've tried to do I mean they they did ask at the last you know at the last meeting how oh, we, we've really these meetings are really have been really useful and you know are we going to continue them and you know we gave them we've given them some pointers we're, we're we've still got a, a couple of meetings with them but I don't quite know the answer to that really I think that's something in my practice as a coach, as a team coach, that I perhaps need to pay a bit more attention to. You know, what what gifts, what tools, what what advice can you leave a team with once your paid commission is finished with them? Because let's face it, budgets come to an end, and you know. I think that's an outstanding question for me. Thank you.
feels like the gestalt's closing. What have you learned about yourself and your behaviors as a team coach during this session? Um, well, I've learned something that I perhaps always suspected that my empathy for people can sometimes get in the way of me being direct as direct as I perhaps need to be and that to keep coming back to contracting more regularly not just with, in the system, not just with the team, because that happens regularly when you're with the team, but contracting in that wider system as well, which is, that can be challenging. We have permission to champion you. Champion me. Praise you. Oh. Sure. <laughs> just absorb it. Thanks for the vulnerability here. You clearly care about your work, you have supervision on it, and what amazing work you're doing for those little children of the future. Well, they're doing it, but thanks. Thank you. It does it it always feels nice to work in the public sector. It, it, mm. it, yeah. Amira. I want to thank you, Deborah, for giving us the opportunity to learn from you uh, how a team coach and team coaching uh, can be an experience uh, Fulfilled experience, I would say, not over one. So you encouraged us to, to think about different areas and different levels and different uh, uh, levels of this uh, system that you're working in. It reminded us on how maybe even our, uh, you know, the empathy part and caring about the team uh, help or not help us sometimes. And you being aware and being vulnerable about it is uh, really something nice to witness. So thank you for that. You are an ethical coach. Thank you, Samira. That's good, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> sometimes you can get lost. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah, thank you so much for being so honest so sincere, so vulnerable in front of so many people. Uh, I think that it, I'm quite sure it, it was a challenge. And you really helped me get out of the spider web. Now I feel much lighter at the end of the session. I'm 100% sure with, with all your empathy, with your professional stance, with your rigor as a coach, as a team coach, 100% sure you will help those teams and their team leaders get out of that spider web as well. No doubt. Thank yeah, you. keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, sure. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lena and Samira as well. Yeah. So we are complete for this part. I know you've got to dip off soon, Deborah. 
got about I 10 invite, minutes. Brilliant. And I invite anyone who does wish to share anything from that, I mean, any championing, anything you were experiencing, put it in the chat and we'll make sure Deborah gets it. I believe there's going to be a lot in there, Deborah, coming. So um, you can have another reflect on your own Great. as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So is it okay, Deborah, for us to, if you need to journal, get water, do whatever you need to do, is it okay for us to debrief Please. all the process yeah. and what came up? Yeah. Do you need me okay. to go? You can no. stay as long as you wish. Okay. Okay. I'll just yeah. go on mute for a bit then. And it is being recorded. So also, if you do want to join in, your choice entirely. Okay. So Ina Samira, first of all, and then we'll go to the wider group. Um, what did you experience as working? What didn't? Where did we go on the model? Any thoughts? Samira would go first. Yeah. Okay. No, Samira would go first. Oh, so I go first. All right. Um, I connected it, uh, I connected to the whole, I wouldn't call it story because it's a vivid uh, thing that was happening here and it's still happening as we, we talk. It connected to so many uh, levels of complexity, Claire, and he, the, the, uh, the work that uh, Deb is doing right now uh, impacts different layers. And this brought me to think about, my head was in the supervision part. You know, the, the bits that we tick, was the scoping done? Oh, she knows a lot about the field. Oh, that, that she's into it. And then she's also aware about her... Uh, role as a coach she knows and she cannot solve it for them and then going back I need to be brave to bring that again so all that was a kind of role play there so for me as a supervisor to focus I was actually jotting images you know how my brain works now mm -hmm. so that uh, a learning for me is uh, a good practice that I actually put my hand in work uh, learning is I liked what Anna did. She went beyond the session and what you did beyond the session. I was doing uh, more into what happened, what was the intention of the current situation where both supervisors, you and uh, Anna, were looking beyond that. So that's the learning for me. That's what's coming up. Mm. Yeah. Uh, building on what Samira just mentioned about the complexity thing, I think uh, our session today, it's in a way reflected this microcosm of complexity with the teams uh, Deborah is working with, because uh, we also went to different layers. We talked about uh, uh, our sensations. We talked about cognitive. We talked about somatic. And all these blended very well into the picture of complexity. That's what I've noticed. And uh, as Samira was saying, I was thinking about my uh, how I'm seeing that if I look at the situation from an aerial view. I don't know, this word empathy that Deborah mentioned, it just really buzzing in my head. Empathy to the team, empathy to the community, empathy to those team leaders who are definitely want, want uh, they actually want the burden out of their shoulders and they found Deborah as a person fit to get that burden so that they feel lighter in that field of complexity. Uh, this You need you need to sort that out. Deborah mentioned that they actually came forward with that. You need to sort that out so that they feel lighter. And from the position of this empathy towards those burdened people, to those team leaders, 
how can we see this frame, this picture, a little bit in a different way? Because you wanted, uh, you ask us the question, how can I think differently? What if this is the entrance point to thinking differently? Well, a lot of things, a lot of thoughts buzzing in my head right now. Uh, it's a great learning how complex all the systems are at different levels, at a supervision level as well. Thank you for the great learning. I want to just ask if we can share the model again. So from my perspective, I felt that um, knowledge and behavior, because with this model, you can do all the bits in a session. You can focus on a few bits. There's nowhere to start. It isn't cyclical. And so knowledge and behavior stood out for me. Reflection, I would have loved to have given Deborah even longer in terms of, you know, we did a lot maybe too much as opposed to going that bit deeper. And I even spoke over Deborah at least twice. And it's a demo when we're, um, you know, being observed, these type of things can happen. Um, the system and what's going on in that team and what's replicated, obviously the field was so relevant for this one, and especially that sharing about the NHS for those that don't know about it was important. And then the coping with setbacks and dependencies in the transition planning was here. We definitely had elements of momentum, especially when the pictures came in there and we worked to celebrate and champion at the end. And I've got two things on my mind here, Debs, if you're happy to share. Number one, for what you came to the session with, did you get some of that from it? And then the other thing is, what was it like shifting to the cards and working with those and what else, um, you know, what way did they enable you to reflect? Sorry, I was looking at the chat as well. Um, the in in terms of what did I get from the from the question I asked you? I think from what what was. A valuable addition was the perspective of of the longer term and I am going to be able to use that to have a more powerful conversation or hopefully a, a more impactful conversation with the managing director and the clinical director around their aspirations for the long term and if they can think about what they want from the long term and change their perspective Maybe that's an entry into, you know, getting their dopamine up or trying to just reduce their, the opposite, trying to reduce their apprehension for having the difficult conversations because they're overwhelmed with difficult conversations. Um, and I, and the metaphors as well that you asked me about and I came you know, I answered that rubber dinghy. That's really quite strong as well to help me to be able to help the team. It, it, it really is. I mean, the more I think about it, actually, a rubber dinghy is a bit. It's a bit like a life jacket, isn't it? Um, I don't. It, I don't. My brain's also going to hugely awful scenes of uh, refugees as well, and I don't want to go there. But um, it, 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 it's quite strong. As, as to what team coaching can be and your and the, and the cards they're just you're just using a different part of your brain aren't you I think um all of a sudden instead of having to think about it we, and, and get lost in the complexity yourself you've got images to just just immediately connect with and and, and they 
they help articulate thoughts and emotions that maybe are subconscious that you didn't that would take and you, I'm demonstrating now would take a long time to actually piece together and articulate yeah. thank you thank you thank so you we'll, all of you what we'll do now is we'll all go on the screen and everyone else is invited to say whatever they wish so who would like to share or ask questions? Laws, did you have your hand up there? Yes, I yes, I have. Over Sorry. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bora, so much for your openness. And this was really great. We, I think everybody learned a lot. Um, there's one picture popping up in my mind. Sorry for this. Uh, I'm a pediatrician, that's why maybe it's popping up, and neonatologist. I see you cleaning up uh, the delivery room for this team. <laughs> it's up to them to know. And you often said in your, in your speech that you want to have the general director on board, you want to have this, you want to... Um, I, maybe it's up to them to, 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 to do so. It's up to them to challenge the general director. It's not up to you, in my perspective. And then I would question a little bit, what are the roles and responsibilities in this team? They sh seem to be quite weird, <laughs> in my perspective. And uh, what could be a good and a worst case scenario if they do not make the next, next step? But sorry for this cleaning up the delivery room. <laughs> That's okay. You're making me think about the um the drama on Amazon Prime at the moment with dead ringers. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. <laughs> um do you need me to answer that, of course? Um maybe maybe um if this is such a complex, diverse, difficult team. It's up to find. It's up to them mm -hmm. to find a solution. Yeah, yeah. To, to make up their mind, maybe I would. I would talk about what are the circles of control, influence, or uh, concern that they have. What uh, what is what they can influence? Otherwise, you can be really sad about what you and and uh, and complain about a lot of things. But maybe. But maybe uh, you will lose a lot of power in in uh, in talking about things that you cannot uh, really influence. Thank you. Yes. I'm thinking there as well, transactional analysis and um, what parent role you're potentially playing, and what way it could be moved adult to adult. Thank you. Yeah, um, I should clarify because i can see a few people putting their hands up as well the team have been in communication with the managing director and the clinical direction they they have i didn't wade in you know the coaching was very much for them to make the requests and they have done they just have not been answered so i have in my review meetings also made the requests um what that makes me, I don't know, maybe a sister, <laughs> no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you. I'm also, um, I know Samira and Ina are aligned with this. We're realizing so much as well, you know, when people have done their MBAs and they've had loads of coaching, quite often leaders benefit from supervision, that restorative and reflective space. And I'm wondering, um, I'm wondering, would that be useful as well? Nicola, you were next. Just a clarification, uh, Claire, uh, just to bring things to the perspective, the comments are on the supervision process, not the content and the topic of the what the coach brought to the session, right? So the comments and the questions and the feedback are regarding the supervision process itself. 
because we don't have the contracting of others to supervise them today. Right. Yeah. And thanks. Go ahead, that, Nicola. John as well. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure if then if my my question fits within those parameters. I I guess my the my gut feeling, and um, what came to mind is you wading through um, Deborah wading through a bit of treacle, and there was somebody else potentially who could help. Who um, you know, it. it and it may have just been language, so this is not, and it, I'm not, it's not a blame name or anything like that. I need to do this. You have an associate coach as well. What were they bringing? And somebody mentioned that in the in the the chat. So I will just put that there and drop it if it's not of any use. Thank you. And I'm just going across the screen, Alex, and then after Alex, Robbie. Okay. Hi everyone. I just have some uh, questions um, uh, that I, while I was listening to the, I mean, to the, and uh, it was probably my uh, my own fault, but I didn't realize there was a co-coach. Uh, I heard many of the questions and then the answers were, were something like I instead of we. I don't know if that helps you. Uh, and uh, the other thing, uh, this is a real complex case. Uh, it's full of uh, sites, uh, too many stakeholders, probably. And uh, trying to consider the system and the stakeholders at the same time may create some, I don't know, uh, probably methodological. Uh, you know hurdles on the way and uh, that's another thing that uh, came to my mind and then um, when you chose the, the tortoise it was funny because I, I you know what i thought is it is not for you to choose the vehicle but it, it is their task and they uh, they have to choose where they want to go and what is the pace they want to follow and you want to uh, you know you can do what you can do uh, you probably, um, I mean, you've done a lot of uh, 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 very professional work at the moment, and so probably they have to think about what they want to do. That's all I wanted to share, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And all data is data. <laughs> is it Alex next? I think it is. Thank you very much uh, for your vulnerability. It was incredible today. And the, the supervisors, the, the way you phrased the, the questions were really wonderful and helped me also to reflect personally. Um, and it's one, there's two small supervisory, supervisory questions that I came up with. And the first one was with the image of what vehicle um, does this need? And sometimes I know I reflect back in my practice that I want to hurry it up. And I thought of an ambulance blasting with sirens on was what I came up with, with the vehicle for the tortoise. And that was the first impression. And when Deborah shared that she thought of a dinghy, I was, well, that was perfect. And I saw like, allow the pace to be it's of the team, you know, allow the pace them to go on their own pace. So I really appreciated that. And the one question that came to mind was, what is it costing them to not have these conversations? And what is it costing them to not answer the questions as this process goes out? That's all I wanted to contribute. So thank you. Thank you. Robbie? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, I'll say thank you very much for that session. Very, uh, uh, very, very insightful. I just wanted to comment that for me, um, what uh, the, the how the um, those visual uh, choices that you gave um, opened up the conversation, and particularly asking uh, asking the your co supervisors, um, where you, you all gave a different perspective, and this suddenly opened up a whole range of of different thoughts and ideas, which I thought was was very freeing. It's something I hadn't I'd never really thought of doing before, and I thought it was a very powerful technique that um, really moved things forward in a very um, a very powerful way. Thank you. And today I facilitated moving the you know making them bigger, etc. And 
that can also be where you put the link in the chat and the person being supervised or when we use it in coaching um, you know or you can use it with teams they can move things around but you can also um, use it for sculpt where each member of a team is a different image and how big are they how spaced out are they and you can bring in different stakeholders in the sculpts as well so there's all sorts of uses for that Nicola I just wanted to just share an observation um and I know that we're inviting you know questions on the process and and a lot of people are saying oh but what about what about the co what about the co facility what about this and, and do you know what it, it stands out to me is that everybody likes this technique and they all want to get involved in it now everybody wants to be a, a co-supervisor and to me that um that that shows me the value of this model and how this absolutely works um and um i'm really excited i mean i was i was really fortunate enough to be supervised by by claire and her team as a as, as a coach um when I, I brought a particular problem to a supervision group that you had and i i myself was was really excited about being supervised by all these different people and get all these different perspectives in so for me the observation is that the the people that are here also want to take part in things like that and that and and that for me is 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 is, is quite striking um and i think that when you see this type of group supervision in place you're, you're kind of intrigued about the process and then you want to get involved and that's that's what's sticking with me and with that i remember um craig mckinsey talking to me once and because he supervised me and i've supervised him and he says remember with this there's your stuff there's their stuff, there's the stuff you've both got, and then there's just stuff. So, um, you know, when we're contributing and notice what's going on somatically, that checking of whose stuff is it, could be a better word for stuff, but it, it lands, whose stuff is it, is really useful as well. Because sometimes there's a team that we're coaching, and that's what's going on for us when we're hearing the actual supervisee speak and so realizing actually it's my stuff and over there the team that I've been working with and Elizabeth yes adding my my thanks um to you all um maybe you've partly just answered the the question that I had I was really interested in in that starting point of you know your somatic response to to Deborah's story and I wonder if that is something that you always do and what it allows you to do later on in the in the session that you couldn't do if you if you hadn't done that uh, hadn't asked that question at the start. Mm. So sometimes that approach we do for a number of different rounds. And today, because it was in the flyer, we actually consciously chose to use the images as well. Because sometimes with these techniques, people feel that um, how on earth do we use image cards online? So we were sharing using it on Miro, but also there's so many different ones, and it's a you know there's a free version and a small subscription. Um, I'm not on commission with um, DeckHive, for example. So with that technique, if I was supervising without observation, it would be what feels right in the moment and to go with that particular tool or technique. And also, once we know the person, there's that thing of knowing their learning styles, but also challenging them to stretch into what isn't always comfortable for them, because of course that takes us to fabulous places. Um, I know, John Lowry Joyce is on the call. The other thing is using the 
John was my teacher for this, the Distal. Bye, Deborah. Thank you so much. I know you have to go. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Yeah, John's on the call if he's still here. He was my teacher for the um, Distal Empty Chair technique. And so that again can be used online, even just, you know, moving from one perspective to another perspective. So all these things can be done effectively online. Thanks, Elizabeth. Anything else? We've got some videos as well using um, sculpting with image cards, and different techniques with image cards on our YouTube. And also when I send the write-up for the model, I'll also send you a link to some um, different ways to use image cards in person or online. It's just a complimentary um, handout we've got. John, and hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. Thanks. I, 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 was, I was interested. The, the thing, one thing that struck me right very early on was that Deborah uh, talked about feeling guilty about presenting such a complex case. Um, now, my recall was that you, you didn't pick that up as um, a dynamic. Uh, because it's obviously something that relates here as well. It's the the some of something to do with our her her presentation here with us as the audience. And I wondered what happened to you as the supervisory team that that um, strong uh, comment wasn't picked up. It would would have been something I would have wanted to reflect on. What was the maybe the parallel process around guilt? and complexity um so just i was i was that was the one thing that that stood out for me right at the beginning mm. i think um i think you've hit the nail on the head oh. and i'm thinking also what's going on with her and the team and yeah. i wanted to mother her don't worry about that it's okay so there's some learning for me there which which is a parallel process because it's what Deborah said, you know, her desire Absolutely. was to to make it better um, yeah. and to to create a resolution. Um, yeah. there. Because I went to the sort of performance anxiety, and I've said a lot about this team because of the complexity, as opposed to and what's really going on for you. Yeah. And John, I'll get in touch. I'd love supervision on supervision of this session if you're up for it oh you're okay. gonna invite us as well claire and if john's happy you Ina, <laughs> and deborah are more than welcome oh okay uh, oh, that'll be a rich conversation that will yes <laughs> <laughs> thank you very, thank you very much anyway for putting yourselves out there in, in this way to um it's quite a risk um hmm. So not only to Deborah, but to the uh, three of you as the supervisors. I can't believe we're at time already. Um, um, we've got half an hour of networking. Please do stay if you'd like to. But I suppose just as we just we come to an end here. I mean, Claire, you and I spoke at the at the beginning about um, all the people that registered and how you were feeling at the start. How do you feel now having completed this session in front of all these people? How do you feel? It was interesting, yeah, because I got the, it was before we went online, um, I got the email that over, well, almost 350 had registered this session and it only went out last week. So I was saying to Nicola, oh, I'm now, um, you know, performance anxiety. I think naming it, you get over that. Um, I, I want to watch it again. And I will, so that I can learn. And obviously, learning from all of us, because there's so much knowledge on these calls. I will also be reading the chat. So more work for me to come. Wonderful. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Deborah. I know she's had to drop off, but thank you, Samira, and thank you, Inna, for this really valuable, valuable session. I can 
I, I'm, I already know that the recording of this can be watched and re-watched and re-analyzed by everybody here and everybody who who signed up and I'm going to send the recording afterwards as well. Um, and so thank you so much for be for your vulnerability, for your insight, for sharing the model, for sharing yourselves and for just leading just this really valuable session. Thank you. Thank you. And for you holding the space for us.